So thanks for joining us and watch the video a little bit longer. My name is Maya Hazlett and I work for Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. And today I'm out here at the Iowa Youth Crop Scouting Competition. This is a great opportunity for youth um, to come out and show some of their skills related to integrated pest management and crop scouting. Uh, we have some great uh, judges, some of our state agronomists, some industry professionals working with the youth uh, to learn more about uh, crop production. Um, and so it's a really uh, fun day and I'm looking forward to seeing how our teams do. The youth come out and they uh, work with some of the field plots out here at the Field Extension Education Laboratory. Uh, they'll do things like identify diseases and weeds. Um, they'll look at some uh, disorders, uh, answer questions about uh, pesticide use uh, and um, other issues related to crop management. We have teams here from all over Iowa competing today and they get a chance to meet, um, do some activities together, get to know each other. And then in September, we have a regional competition where we'll have teams coming together from six states uh, to compete uh, this uh, coming September. Good evening, everyone. Um, give me a second, I'm gonna reshare my screen. Great to see everyone this evening. Thanks for joining our 4-H and FFA crop scouting um, webinar we're doing this evening. Um, give me a second, and I'm back. Sorry about that little pause with technology there. Just making sure everything's working. Again, uh, thanks for joining us on this evening. This is the Minnesota, not the Iowa, 4-H um, and FFA crop scouting um, webinar that we're doing tonight. We did use the Iowa video because we actually, a few years back, went and uh, watched the Iowa State competition to get, kind of give us an idea of how to run one of these in Minnesota. So um, and it was made sense for us to share the Iowa one because we pretty much replicate what was happening in that, that video. But we also want to kind of walk through some of the specs and um, how this competition works here in Minnesota. So if you have questions, um, fabulous. We want to hear them. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear anything you're thinking about 4-H and F the FFA Crop Scouting event. Um, so again, welcome. Uh, we're going to introduce here in a little bit, but let me just give me a couple more um, housekeeping things. So if you could, or if you can access the chat, if you can put your name and county, and then either your, uh, um, an insect or a weed that you've identified. Um, if you've been out in the field either this year or last year, if you've seen an insect or a weed, put that in there alongside your name in your county um, just to see what you're, what you're seeing out there. So throw that in the chat um, and we are going to get started here. And we're going to start with some introductions so you know who you're with this evening. So my name is Brian McNeil. I'm a regional extension educator and I'm located out of the Morris Regional um, Office. And I'm one of the team members on our state 4-H agronomy and horticulture team. And also one person that has kind of brought this experience to Minnesota. So that's who I am. And Anya, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everybody. I am Anya Johnson. I am the extension educator for agronomy and horticulture. And I am based out of the Farmington Regional Office. So I'm excited to... I. Um, and new to my role. And so I'm excited to um, lead you guys, help lead you through this experience this year. And Emily. I'm Emily Schmiedeberg and I'm the agronomy and horticulture intern this summer. Um, I'm working in the Northwest region, but I'm here to help all of you as you prepare, prepare for the crop scouting contest, or if you have any other questions relating to this project area. Thanks, Emily. And one more housekeeping thing. If you've got another phone or an iPad next to you, we are going to do a Kahoot here in just a little bit. If you don't have that, that's okay. Just a pen and a piece of paper will work too. But if you do have a phone or a, an iPad, you can participate in our Kahoot experience um, that we're going to be doing here shortly. So if you've got access to that, get that prepared. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Emily, and she's going to explain to us a little bit about what this crop scouting thing is. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about crop scouting, why 4-H hosts this contest, 
and some of the key things that youth will be able to gain from learning how to scout crops. I've experienced working as a crop scout, so I'm excited to share with you from personal experience some of the things that I've been able to gain. As you can see on this slide, a crop scout inspects farmers' fields and records weed, insect, disease, and other factors. They play an important role by helping farmers to make timely, informed, and economical field crop decisions. So what exactly does a crop scout do? Well, it starts off with a lot of studying, and we have some really great resources for you to use to learn all about all of the weeds, insects, diseases, and disorders that you might find during your practices and at the state competition. Before you go out, it's important to know what you might find because many of the things look very similar to the untrained eye. I believe that the easiest way to find out what's wrong with a plant is to first find out what's not wrong by assessing the symptoms and ruling out what it can't be to narrow it down to a couple possible options. The pictures and the resources that we're gonna send out to teams will be really helpful for this identification. 4-H has developed this program because every single person can use the, gain, the knowledge gained in their adult lives, whether they're planning to have a career in agriculture or just to have a few houseplants at home. My experience crop scouting gave me a great head start in my agronomy and soils classes and gave me a better understanding of the feeds I use at home for my livestock. It also helped me to know how to identify the pests that were bothering plants in my family's garden and to know the difference between pests and helpful insects. Partic participation on a crop scouting team will help you to learn basic life skills such as teamwork, communication, problem solving, and predicting outcomes. All of these skills are what your future employers are looking for. Crop scouting can prepare you to help can help prepare you for careers directly involved in agriculture, as well as ag adjacent careers. If you're looking for a career in agriculture, you can consider things such as being an agronomist, farm manager, precision ag specialist, or a plant breeder. If you're interested in agriculture or plant sciences, but not, might not wanna be hands-on in the field, look into career opportunities such as an ag engineer, drone specialist, ag journalist, or even a field turf manager. If you're, as you're practicing this summer, think about how what you're learning can help you in whatever it is you aspire to do. All right, thank you, Emily. If anyone has any questions at the moment for Emily, throw it in the chat or unmute yourself. Let's, let's see if there's any questions for Emily before we go on to our next slide. Anything that she shared or classes that she took in college. She's still a college student, so it, um, what she said makes sense. Okay, I'm not seeing anything yet. If you think of something for Emily, you can shoot her a message here um, as we go through the presentation. So again, Emily, thank you. So we want to give you a little the nuts and bolts of our, our competition and how we put this together. Um, so what's needed for an FFA and crop scouting contest or for it um, to, to compete in this? You need a, a team of three to five. So think about maybe other 4-Hers in your club, other 4-Hers in your county, or if there isn't anybody in your county, who's next door in the neighboring county that you could partner with and, and make a team? And I'll talk about teams here in a little bit. So you need a team of youth of three to five. A part of this team, then, you need two adult coaches. One of the coaches needs to be in a screened adult, and the other can be a farmer, it can be an agronomist, it can be a seeds dealer, it can be anyone that has that kind of agronomy connection, maybe a crop scout, um, and be, be part of that team um, to help you do this and practice for this event. The one thing that we got excited when we were in Iowa, we saw there was a lot of crop scouts who were coaches. And as they were out in their fields, they would bring their teams with them doing their job, but showing their team what they were doing, either looking for insects, looking for diseases, whatever they were doing that day. So um, it can be really fun for someone who's out in the field already to have two or three or five other people with them showing them what they're doing. We do have some different um, arrangements for teams. 
And so a, there can be a junior team that's sixth through eighth grade and a senior team is ninth through 13 plus. Now, the, the only difference between the two teams is, well, of course, eight grade levels, right? Um, but the, the teams that are the ninth through 13th grade level, they will get to advance onto the national competition. And so where Minnesota is a part with five other states that are putting on a national crop scouting event. And so the top two teams from Minnesota in that senior um, grade level, that ninth through 13, can participate um, in the national event. We will also try to help um, fund as much as that experience as possible. So we can help with, if it, if it takes um, some hotel rooms, some mileage, whatever that is, we will try to help support those teams as they go on um, to that national event. And I'll talk about that event um, in a little bit here. We also have um, an option for individuals as well. So if, if you're someone in the county and you can't find anybody in your county, you can't find anybody neighboring counties or maybe any FFA people, you can be an individual. We'll, we'll be pretty flexible and take individuals as well. Now, if, if you score really high and we send a team of say three people to um, the national event, we might invite you to be part of that team. So you can still experience that national level um, with a team as they go forward, if you want to do that. And then we also want um, you to be creative with your teams. So it could be people from your 4-H club. It could be people from your county. It could be people from your neighboring counties. They can be 4-H teams, FFA teams. They could be mixed, 4-H and FFA teams. So we don't have big um, divisions saying it can only be this or this. However, you can get those teams together. We're flexible and know that being a mixed team with other counties or other organizations is just fine. Now the contest itself is on July 19th and it's gonna be at the St. Paul campus. Um, we're using their variety trial plots as well as the, the faculty from the St. Paul campus and extension faculty to be officials. Um, we would like $10 a person or $25 a team if that's a challenge, if, if you need some help with that, please let us know. We don't want that to be a barrier, but we would like $25 for each team. Um, the contest itself will be anywhere from five to seven rotating stations. And our stations will be themed. So one station will be insects, another will be weed identification, another one might be corn growth stages, um, another could be soybean growth stages, we might include a um, sprayer calculation um, station. We might even include forages. Whatever the five that we end up with, we will make sure that you get resources to support your team so they know what to expect when they come to this event. Um, and we'll talk more about what you'll get um, when you um, pre-register for our event. So there'll be rotating stations. Each station will have an, an official with a scoring sheet. So the official might be an extension um, educator, it might be a, um, a, a faculty member from St. Paul campus, or it might be somebody from Bayer. We're gonna try to get industry and um, university faculty together to, to have these officials. We will um, have them use a score sheet looking something like this. So the score sheet, um, what will happen when you get to that, that station, we're going to use insects for um, a, an example, is the, the official might say, take this sweep net and go sweep the plot and see what kind of insects you find. And then you'll bring back the insects with a sweep net, you'll identify the insects, and then you'll have a conversation with that, that official. You will be um, given points on how you've identified the insects and how close you are to that identification. And you will be given points how you work as a team, because as Emily said, um, businesses are looking for people, how they interact with their knowledge, but also how they interact with teams when they come to schools or, or to, um, to jobs. And then we'll also score how you have that conversation with the official. And so this will be kind of similar to this, where it'll be the requirement, the points possible, and then the, the official will score and then give comments. And then we'll tabulate all of the scores from all five stations. And that's how we'll place our teams. 
Um, and you will get these forms back too. So you can see what the comment said. There's a comment section as well as, so you see what, how many points you earned um, at the variety of stations. So again, this is just a sample of uh, what that, that scoring grid will look like. Um, and then, like I said before, the two top teams will advance on to the national competition and we'll have uh, prizes for a variety of things. We'll have prizes for maybe the best team name. We'll have prizes for, again, scoring. Um, when I go through the handbook, we'll also, so we have some other points that you can earn as you're doing practices. And the more practices you do, that will give you more points for another award. So we've got plenty of prizes to go around. Um, there may be some cash prizes and some plat prizes that are blingy. So just be prepared. We are gonna give a lot of stuff away. Um, talking about those two adults, again, one of the adults needs to be a screened volunteer um, to be part of that team. The other one can be a crop scout, again, a farmer, ag professional. Um, it could be an agronomist. Be creative on that other person that you find um, to be that kind of content expert, um, to help the team learn about the variety of um, kind of challenges we'll be offering. Um, the, the adult coaches can help organize and really help provide practices and support that team during the state event. We will also provide some guides and some um, maybe some, some different ways to do practices, um, to how to organize those. So once you, again, um, the earlier you sign up for this event, the more resources you're gonna get, and those are resources we will provide. Um, and then the role of a staff person is really to be there to help coordinate practices, help recruit any team members. So utilize your local 4-H educator to help support that team um, to be successful in this opportunity. Um, Emily, Anya, anything I've forgotten as I keep going? The only on thing that good... I would... Oh, the I, I was going to say, I'm that... on a babble roll, so I'll stop for a second. Nope, you're good. The only thing I would say is that um, Brian talked about being creative with your teams. We have um, over 20 counties who have young people who have expressed an interest in being a part of um, our crop scouting. And so you never know that there might be someone right next door in a neighboring county that we, we could pair you up with. And there might be um, individuals in your own local county that. Um, you don't know about. So make sure you talk with your local educator because we know that they're out there. Thanks, Anya. And we'll try to get names out as best as we can in a safe manner. Um, so if people like, like Anya said are looking for teammates, we can maybe say, well, here's somebody in this county looking for a team or looking, you know, that type of thing. We'll provide some of those help pieces as well. Another piece um, of information that you might want to get your hands on, again, the earlier you sign up your team, the more resources we're going to get you. This is our handbook that uh, we're going to try to provide each team that registers so they know what to expect when they come before they come to this event. Um, so I'm just going to gloss over a couple things. That first page is giving the purpose, which Emily so eloquently stated. Um, it'll give the agenda in there. We'll talk about the stations and we'll make sure we identify what stations so you can prepare your team to be the, the most successful at our event. Um, of course, we have to have rules. So we've got a rule section in here. Um, here's ways to participate. And I covered about the junior and senior teams, the individual. Here's some ways to, to prepare for the event. So we've got some bullets, uh, maybe bringing them some speakers, an agronomist, a farmer, to really help your team, to, to show them some things of what they should be looking for. Um, maybe there's a couple of farmers that wanna volunteer their fields for you to practice in, be creative. Um, we talk about the judging, the awards. Here's the other point section I wanted just to, to bring to your attention. So as you're, maybe you've, you've got some people that you've been practicing, great, um, but know that there's a team section for points. And so if you've got your five team members, if you've got a team name, the coaches, um, if you can show us that you were practicing before June, June 1st, we'll give you 20 points for that. Um, if you're about halfway there um, and you're gonna start your practices before the 15th of June, we'll give you 10 points. We're gonna be pretty fluid with these points too. So just know that the more points we can give out, the better for you. And hopefully the more that 
It'll help you practice and prepare for this event. Um, then there's kind of the practice points that if you can show us that you've been practicing, we'll give you 10 points per practice. Um, maybe you did some service. Maybe your team volunteered and helped um, at a field plot day, um, even park cars. Um, we'll give you points for that. Um, and then if you even saw maybe Extension was offering, say, a, a plot tour, and you took your team to a plot tour, we'll give you points for that. I, again, we're pretty free with our point giving. So if you can demonstrate that you were at these types of things, we're going to give points. And all the points go to more prizes. This, this event has more prizes than any other event in 4-H. So just be prepared. Um, so if you get a lot of points, there's cash prizes. We may have some other agronomy items like soil probes, uh, temperature gauges, whatever. Um, and of course, the bling is important. I know many people love those t-shirts and, and maybe some other fun items, ice scrapers, I don't know. Anya, I could see ice scrapers in your head. So I just threw that out there because I knew that's gonna be a hot item. So just know that the more you can get your team going and, and doing things, if you can show us that, um, by golly, we'll give you some points and uh, put out some kind of some fun prizes there. So that's our handbook. Um, we will give that as a resource again once teams um, sign up with us. So I bet you're still sitting there. Okay, you've talked a lot about the nuts and bolts, but what really is this? What are we going to do? So here's some little interactive time. So again, um, if you've got your a phone with you, if you've got an iPad, um, we want you to click into Kahoot. And so I'm going to start this so you can see what we're going to do. And then I'll give you some more instructions. So just be patient through my clicks here. So if you want to go to www.kahoot.it. And once you get there, there's this little pin, 1519821. You can enter that in. And then it gives you an option to put your name. You can be creative, you can put your name, you can put your full name, you can put your county from where, whatever you want to do. Maybe it's your crop scouting team name. Um, I think I saw Patrick Jerick on here. You can put his name in there a couple times. Be creative, that, that's all right. I'll give you a few moments to get logged in. And again, if you don't have a device, don't worry, you can still participate. Get a piece of paper, a napkin, a pen or pencil. And then you can write down your answers and put in the chat. I know Anya and Emily are both looking at the chats for any questions um, or if there's some scores we need to get from Kahoot. So I will stop for a minute because you're probably sick of hearing me babble. You can get your names in there. And once we get the majority of people, we're going to start our, our competition here. Well, I'm going to keep going. Sorry. Once I give you the, the mic, I just keep talking. So if you haven't played Kahoot, we have 14 questions. There's gonna be two questions in each category. So we have two questions on insects, two on weed ID, two on corn, um, corn growth stages, two on soybean growth stages, a couple others. Little surprises in there for you. Um, the faster you answer the question, um, you'll get a little fiery symbol by your name. So that shows that you got like fast fingers. And you can really answer questions fast. But after each question, it'll show the people that participated and their scores. And it'll keep kind of building as we go. And at the end, there'll be kind of a podium showing our first, second, third place participants. So we have just a few more seconds and then we're gonna get started. All right, and again, if you aren't gonna join, have a piece of paper. Well, I see a couple more still joining in. Um, I was gonna say one second. I think there's a couple more joining us that are, we're asking some questions in the chat. Thanks for holding me back, Anya. I'm so excited about this. I just gotta pull it back a little bit. So thanks for pulling me back. Thank you. 
with East Ottertail. Welcome. Must be a team effort there. One last, one last opportunity to join. Put it in the chat if you're still joining. Otherwise, we're gonna move on. And again, if you just wanna sit back and watch and listen and try your best, put your answer in the chat. Emily and Anya will be eagerly looking for your answers there as well. All right, we are gonna get started. So here's our Forage Crop Scouting Kahoot. Three, two, one, our first question is, what type of insect is this? Is it a corn borer, a red cutworm, black cutworm, or I don't know? It is the black cutworm for those that answered that one correctly. So we've got four of you that did that nicely done. And as I said, we're gonna, this will show us our point scores here. So Nick is out in front already and Doug, and we got a CK John with East Ottertail following close behind. So here we go is our next question. And again, it's around insects. What insect is this? Black cutworm, European corn borer, slug, or I don't know. This one is the European corn borer, and congratulations to all of those that got it right. Nicely done. So we're getting some comments in the chat. Some say the first one was ugly, um, the set then kind of cute, the <laughs> Uro corn burr and blue so far in the chat. Keep the chat going. Keep Emily and Anya on their toes on that. That's great. And just know again, our in-person event, everything will be live. So you won't be looking at pictures of insects. You might go out and sweep a, uh, a plot. You might look at real insects on a table. So just know that we're doing this just for fun tonight, just give you an idea. But at the event itself, everything will be hands-on real, okay? So our next one is around diseases. What kind of disease is this? Soybean vein neurosis, root rot, rust, or I don't know. The soybean vein neurosis ones are correct. So nicely done with that. Now, here we go. Um, Nick is still in front, but Doug has the highest streak with three so far. So you see that little bit of fire there. He's got a fast finger on that. Um, so keep working. Here's our next category. What kind of disease is this? Popcorn issue, white mold, smut, or I don't know. This one is smut. So the two of you that got that right, nicely done. Now again, this, if you go to our event, the officials that have the, the diseases, they'll have stuff right there. You're gonna look at real stuff that's affecting real plants. So no pictures, everything will be real stuff. And we've got a new first place with a fast finger. So what he has, that, Nick is in second, Doug's in third, Lisa is in fourth. Here's the next category, what type of weed? So now we've switched over to weeds, what types of weeds is this? And I'm sorry, some of these pictures are pretty small. Volunteer corn, black nightshade, milfoil, or I don't know.
This one is the Black Nightshade. That's the hard thing with Kahoot. Once you put a picture in, you can't get sizes very well. So some of these are going to be kind of small, but this one is the Black Nightshade. And we got in the chat Nightshade and it was poisonous. <laughs> get the chat's coming. Good, good, good. And you see our leaders are still solid in their lead right there. Here's our next question. What type of weed is this? Canadian thistle, Russian thistle, American thistle, or I don't know. This one is our Canadian thistle. Sometimes our pictures can be deceiving, but this one is the Canadian thistle. Doug has moved up into second place. No fast fingers here. I think some of our pictures on here are stumping people a little bit. Okay, so our next category, what's wrong with this plant? So this is a plant diagnosis. Is it dry? Is it charcoal rot? Is there fungus? Or I don't know. Charcoal rot is the right answer. Now, you may be like really getting into this, saying, oh, this is kind of cool stuff. Some of these could be fair exhibits. So as you're looking at this and as, you, as you're gonna like, after this, I'm getting my team ready. You can also talk about some of this stuff and bring it to the fair as a fair exhibit. So don't forget that either as we're looking at some of these pictures. So here's our scoreboard. Now Molly has the fast finger. She's up in third place there with a little fire in her little finger. Nick and Doug and Liza, Lisa, Liza, fifth place. Here we go. Question eight. What's wrong with this plant? Another plant diagnosis. Frog eye leaf spot. Rust. Gale damage. I don't know. It is the frog eye leaf spot. Anything in the chats, Anya or Emily? I think we are good. They've gone quiet. They said red. They said oh, red. Red, okay. Well, yes, I suppose that is correct as well. Okay, here's our scoreboard. Molly's moving up there in second. Doug is in third. Sodia is still our strong leader there. Question nine, what does the V stand for in a corn stage? Vegetative, victory, vulnerable, or I don't know. Vegetative is correct. Nicely done. And our leaders are the same. That's the Points are changing, but the leaders are still the same. Go to our next one here. Our pictures are gonna get smaller. What V stage is this corn plant? <laughs> this one's a bad one. Sorry about that. V1, V2, V3, I don't know. The V3 is correct for those two of you that got that one. Our leaders are still in the same. Again, points are changing a little bit. Question 11, just a few left. What growth stage of soybean plant? Is it a VA, a VE, a V1? Or I don't know. Again, in person, these will be a lot easier to look at than a picture. We are the VE stage for the three of you that got that. And Molly moves up into first place and she's got a streak of seven. Nicely done. All right, we're closing in here. It's 12 of 14. At the R6 stage, is this an example of a beginning seed or full seed? I have two choices here, 50-50, beginning or full. It is the full stage. All six of you that are playing got it right. How about in the chat land? 
we've got some answers there. We got, it's, tr it's trying its best and full. And we had a question and yeah. Okay. Let's go on to the scoreboard. Molly's gonna hang in there tight there. Still, she's got eight correct answers in a row. 13 of 14. What is the issue on the left nozzle? So this is sprayer nozzle. What's the issue on the left one? Is it a plug? Is there bad water, bad chemical? I don't know. This one is plugged. So that was an example of a spray nozzle that had some plugged issues. Molly's still hanging in there. Here's our last one. What does the GPA stand for in this formula? Again, this is small. Gross possible answer, gallons per average, gallons per acre, or I don't know. This one is gallons per acre. So the six of you got that right. Now we're gonna go to our podium here. So Doug is in third place. Lily at second. And Molly breaks us at first place. Nice job. Now, and we got our runners of, well, they left. Okay, so we will be setting out prizes for the three of you that answered um, or got on the podium. So nicely done with that. And congratulations. Thanks everyone for playing. Again, this was just an example of um, the different stations that we would have. Um, but we just wanted to give you an example with pictures of what that would be like. Each station would have about 20, 25 minutes where you would be given a challenge um, at that station, and then you'd be working with that official as they're giving you questions and that type of thing, okay? So here's just some more specifics about our event, which I know you probably have got questions about, and we're gonna uh, talk about a few things here. So July 19th, again, is our state event. It's gonna be on the St. Paul campus um, using their plot variety, um, which is great to actually use field plots and in a real field setting. Um, if you go to our um, website, if you type in Minnesota 4-H Crop Scouting, you'll get to this site. And there's a registration form right here. Um, and once you click that form, it's gonna look like this. It's pretty easy to fill out. It doesn't ask you any type of like family history or you have to give a blood type or anything like that. It just gives name, address, what grade you're in, it's pretty easy to go through. So um, we made that as simple as possible. So we want you to sign up. If you sign up by June 15th, we're gonna guarantee that you get all sorts of resources. And they're not gonna be stuff we copy off on the copy machine. It's gonna be glossy handbooks um, like Weed ID. You're gonna get a flip guide that shows all sorts of weeds and how to ID them. Now, the other thing that um, we're going to let you do, you don't have to memorize all of that because there's a lot of stuff to, that you're going to get from us. You can take those resources and use them with you as you're doing the event. So this is not a memorize and try to regurgitate type of event. You're going to bring your resources with. As you go through each station, you can use your resources to help you figure out um, what's going on at that station. So just know that. Um, again, we're going to give you nice, nice materials, um, such as an IPM handbook, crop disorders, an insect ID book, a weed ID, um, maybe corn and soybean growth stages charts. So you'll have all the resources to, as you practice to prepare for this event. Um, and again, we just want to encourage you, if you register by the 15th of June, we're gonna guarantee you get all of this. The later that you sign up, it's gonna be harder. I can't rely on the US Post, Post Office to get you your stuff in time. So um, make sure you sign up nice and early. Our top two teams um, in that ninth through 13th um, grade, 
they get to represent Minnesota at Purdue on September 15th. Now, again, we will help you as much as we can um, with the expenses, either mileage or hotels or combination, uh, but we'll do our best to support you to get you to that event as well. We're gonna have, like I said before, all sorts of prizes. There's gonna be some cash stuff. There's gonna be other kind of bling stuff. We're uh, working on all sorts of fancy things. So be prepared for that. And then also remember, once you get the handbook, Anya is gonna send a message to everyone after tonight um, because you participate in this event, we're going to give you access to that handbook. It shows you the point systems in there if you want to compete for those other kind of team um, point options. All right. I have done too much talking. I will apologize for that. And so is Emily and Anya are ready to kick me off of Zoom.